Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. My name's Paul Church from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. I hope everybody's well. Um, I hope you can hear me. We'll wait for the all clear. I'll wait till I see a few people coming into the room. I can see we've got some viewers. Good morning and welcome. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, just wait for the little chats to pop up so I know I've got some company rather than just people watching. Um, Stuart's in the room with you. Um, so if you have any questions, then ask away. Good morning, Lynn. There we go. I can relax now. Uh, there's somebody in the room with me. So, um, so I hope everyone is good. Um, a bit fresh this morning down in Kent, but it's nice and sunny out there at the moment. So that's good. Is there anybody else joining us today, Lynn, do you reckon? There we go, there's Jacqueline. Good morning, Jacqueline. Just taking a while for people to, to pull up a chair, say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, wherever you are in the world. There we go, there's Ken, Mo, um, Jill, Lorraine, here we go. Everyone's coming in now. Oh, good. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, good morning, Jane. There we go. So we've got some of the design team in the room. So if you've got any questions, then they're there to help as well. Because um, they're a good egg all round. They really are. Um, good morning, Clive. Welcome. It's your first time live. Good morning. And whereabouts are you in the world, Clive? Um, good morning. I can't read it from here. Where's my glasses? <laughs> the eyesight isn't what it used to be. Good morning, Josie. There we go. Let's have a look. Uh, Chrissy, Susan, Nahid. There we go. Lots of friends in the room today. So I um, hope everybody's been well um, since last week. Um, yeah, this week, last week seems like a long time ago. Um, it's funny that, isn't it? How sometimes the weeks sort of come around really quick. Um, and then other times it seems as if it's like ages since we met, but it isn't. Um, I'm just trying to think what we was doing last week. Let me have a look at my list, see what I had on last week's list. Um, yeah, there was no TV last week, so it was a normal groovy Tuesday on Tuesday. Um, the Shack with Barb on Thursday. And then TV on Sunday with those fantastic landscape, um, the builder scene landscape masks and the, the leaf apertures. Um, really, really good they are. Um, and when Barb did that little demo yesterday in um, the shack with the leaf and the clouds and all of a sudden it just went ping and it just came to life. So, um, so if you missed um, that yesterday, then you can go back and re-watch that on our YouTube channel because all of our previous episodes are there um, and you can go back, you can go back and watch all the Groovy Tuesdays, all the Pergamano schools, all the Shack Shacks. Um, they never disappear. It's like a full library of um, ideas, inspiration, knowledge, tutorials. Um, yeah, it's just full 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 and it's all free which is a bonus so um so how's everybody been doing today um temperatures definitely getting colder now i saw on the news last night about this troll from wherever sort of some country this the cold blast they've called it a troll <laughs> a bit random i suppose it i think the place began with a t um i'm guessing you can hear me i haven't heard from stuart yet um but I'm sure somebody would have said, there we go, sounds is good, thank you, Stuart. <laughs> He's only in the room next door. Obviously took that time for the, um, the text to go up in the world and come back down again. So, um, so we've got Judith in the room, Chris, Jackie, Yvonne, Catherine, Ellen. Um, lots of friendly faces, or, or names anyway. I can just about see little... Um, so, uh, right, okay, so let's have a look. So it's gone off on Facebook. So let me just message Stuart. 
to see what's going on. Uh, apologies for this, technical issues, could be Facebook. Um, has it gone off on Facebook? Let's see what Stuart says. It could be Facebook playing up, it could be, who knows? Technology, great when it works, not so great when it doesn't. So um, uh, I can see people sort of still commenting via Facebook. So there's a lovely Pat. There we go. So maybe it's your Facebook, Jane. I don't know. Oh, there we go. It had a wobbly moment, but it's all fine now. Thank you, Stuart. There we go. So it's all back up and running <laughs> on Facebook again. So. Right. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So what have we been up to? First time tuning in. Um, don't worry that you, you're not late to the party. Um, you can go back and watch all the previous episodes, as I said before, on our YouTube page. Um, so um, we've been looking at the lovely Linda Williams um, groovy plates, the layered Christmas tree and the stocking. Let's turn that one over so we can actually read what it says. Um, so for episodes, I think it was one through to seven, I think it was, we were looking at the Christmas tree. And since then, we've been looking at the lovely stocking. And the, the piece that we've been heading towards is this piece here. And this is using a two-tone parchment. But you could use clear parchment. Um, you could use one color parchment. But what's great is that they have these fantastic car blanks that Mr. Dave makes on his big old windmill press, the platen presses. Um, so they're all perfectly die cut. But they're not just for parchment. You can use them to stamp onto, you can stencil on them. Um, really, really good quality card. And if you don't want it as a, a freestanding um, stocking, then you can just chop it off the top and then you've got two for one. So bonus. So this is one we've been, been looking at. And then here's another version from the lovely Glynis in pink. So again, great for a newborn baby, baby's first Christmas, baby's um, christening. Um, so many different, don't think just because it's a stocking, it's for Christmas. Because you've got that outline of that shape, you can decorate it with whatever you choose. You know what they're looking here? Some of um, Linda's children. Um, okay, so apologies on Facebook. Something seems to be going on. Um, Jim and Stuart are on the case, so I do apologise um, to see why it keeps cutting off. We may have a man come in at the moment and have a look, but everything seems fine this end. Um, so I do apologise. <laughs> we will see what's going on. So um, Stuart will pop a link up um, to the YouTube page, but I'm guessing if Facebook's playing up, then... Well, you won't find the link, but we are on YouTube as well. So if you just search for Clarity Stamp, then you'll find the, um, the f there as well. So there we go. You will find me back again. Facebook stop, swap to on YouTube. <laughs> Stuart, you may, could you pop a link on, um, there we go. It's, he's going to put a, a link on um, Facebook. So Facebook stream. Is dead. YouTube, okay. So Jim's just coming with a sign. <laughs> I was just trying, okay, what's it say, Jim? <laughs> okay, so apologies for that. We're trying to work out what's going wrong with um, Facebook. Um, but in the meantime, Stuart is going to pop a link on the Clarity Stamp Facebook page to redirect you over to YouTube. Maybe it's the cold weather. Maybe it's the troll coming in from wherever it's coming in with the cold blast. Who knows? So, um, so if you do manage to find us on Facebook, um, then you may want to jump over to YouTube. Just the same, exactly the same. Um, then um, you may get a better reception. So... <laughs> 
Oh dear, oh dear. There's nothing like a good bit of live technical issues, is there? But we go with the flow. There's no point in getting worked up about it. Um, can't control it. So let's carry on and see where it takes us. Okay. Right. So as I we was saying, the, this lovely little boot can be used for any occasion. Would be great with um, Linda's children in there. Depends what sort of what you're making, who you're making it for. Whether it be for a new baby, whether it be for a christening, a first birthday. Um, yeah, it could be used for many different occasions. And we've got twins. You can do two of them. I mean, look, wouldn't that look lovely to sort of offset with that not being on the 3D cards, but just layered up onto one piece. Be really nice. So how far have we got? Okay, so let's have a bit of a recap. So what we did to start off with, we used um, some of the, the light teal parchment. Let me grab a piece of white paper. So you can see here, we did the, the tracing out. Let's bring the plate in beside it. Okay, so you can see. So what we did, we traced out the pattern, but we ignored the heel and the toe. We just concentrated on the middle part. And we started to work in this area last week doing some white work. Okay, so when I traced out the little, and I've got it written down, pom-poms, um, we I used the number three tool to trace out the pom-poms so that I got a really soft, line okay so it's that soft you can't even see it because we've started to introduce white work then what we did i didn't get into trouble actually i thought i might go into trouble josie wasn't in the room last week so we looked at some cheating didn't we <laughs> um so Okay, so apologies for any issues on Facebook. We are looking into it. We're not sure whether it's Facebook or it's everything seems to be fine on the YouTube page. So if you can hop over to the YouTube page, you may get an, a better and not be interrupted with it stopping and starting. So, so yes, yeah, so last week we looked at how to sort of do white work by cheating, by removing the colour with an eraser pencil and then colouring in with a white pencil. But we could also reintroduce colour by taking the colour out of the parchment and then reintroducing it with our Perga colour pens or our Perga liner pencils. Now, this one here is red, okay? But it's red on top of the teal. Now, if I take the red, the teal out of the parchment, then I've got a proper red. Okay, so if I turn it over from the back, you can see. Okay, so if you want to reintroduce colour, then you just take an eraser pencil, rub out the colour on the colour parchment, and then pop it back in with whichever pens or pencils you decide to go with. So what we're going to do today, my plan is today, I always have a plan, but it never happens. We're going to do some more white work on the pom-poms. keep forgetting what they're called, pom-poms. And then we're going to do some perforating around the outside. And we'll do some pico cutting. So that is where I'd like to get to by the end of this hour. If um, technology allowed who knows maybe yeah we shall see how far we get or if I don't stop waffling and I talk too much I'm just trying to sort of bide some time <laughs> while they can see if they can sort out what the the problem is so it is what it is okay so what are we going to need for this session okay so hang on, let me get my bits and pieces together in front of me. So for the white work, 
you're either going to use the back of your A4 black mat, okay, or you may want to go with your pink mat, if you've got your pink mat. Oh, sorry about that, focus. We are also going to need some super foam. So I've got my 12 by 12 super foam, because I like working on a larger area. We're going to need our two needle bold. We're going to need our number one. Where's the number two gone? Like right, three. And number one and number two. And my number three and number four has disappeared. So you'll be hiding under here somewhere. Three and four. And then we're going to need some scissors of choice, maybe a pair of glasses, a groovy guard. I think that's all we're going to need that I plan to for this morning. So, okay. Right, so to start off with, we're gonna do a little bit of white work first, okay? So for that, don't need my black mat. Don't need the plate, because we've finished with the plate at this stage. So I need my piece of work that we've been working on. And I think I may also go for the six mil ball tool as well. Maybe not, don't need that one yet. Now, where's that number three and number four gone? I bet I didn't take it out of the... No, it's still in the box. Still in the box. Okay. If there's anybody else still with me, then we shall continue. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. Right. And breathe. It's only caught past. We can have fun for 45 minutes, can't we? Of course we can. Okay, so let's take these groovy tabs off. I'll use my groovy guard to concentrate on the area. Okay. Now I'm going to go with the number four ball tool. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can come in really, really close. Okay. Ken's still on Facebook. Oh, that's good. That's good. Now, which way am I going? I'm going in. So, there we go. I think it could be Facebook issue because apparently it's fine on YouTube. Okay. Oh, it's chair. <laughs> I need to get some oils for oils, some oil for the, these wheels. Okay, so you remember when we was talking last week where we've got the, the circle, okay, and what we don't want to do is go round in a circle to add that white work, okay. So just to recap, let's go to one on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, I'm going to start this side and I'm just going to go up and down very, very lightly from top and bottom. So I'm going from left to right. And then I'm going to start at the bottom, and then I'm going to go up to the top, and then back down again. Okay, so left to right, right to left, start at the top or the bottom, wherever you want to go. And then I'm going to go round in a circle. Okay, and what that does, it gives us a really nice coverage to put the... Um, um, the base coat down. I mean, I've gone a little bit more heavy than I would normally, um, just to show the effect that you get, but there's no donut appearing. See, because if I go, if I was to go round, around, 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 come in the middle, like so, what I'm going to end up with is a little dot in the middle, which we don't want. And then it's harder to work um, that dot out, okay? So let's go to our piece of artwork. I'll bring that into play. So I'm gonna go up and down from left to right. So I'm gonna go from right to left. And I'm gonna start at the bottom 
and then go up to the top and then start at the top and then come down. Now I'm doing this one first, this is the outer one. I haven't decided yet whether to snip this one off or leave it. So it's a good one to start on, okay. So let's turn it over and have a look now at the difference. So you can see now how it's, it's definitely becoming whiter, isn't it? You can see the difference between the two, okay. And that is because I've left it since last week, okay. So we're gonna continue with our pom-poms, okay. So I'm gonna go left and right, right and left, and then top to bottom and back up again. And I'm going on very, very, I'm not putting too much pressure on. I'm just gently stroking the parchment, okay? You can go top to bottom first if you choose. Or you can go left to right first. Doesn't make any difference in relation to that. Okay. So what we're gonna do, because we're having issues with the, the Facebook stream for whatever reason, we will upload the full episode from um, YouTube onto the Facebook page after we've finished. Um, so it'll always be there. There we go. And so we're just slowly moving along and we're adding another layer of white work to our pom-poms. And we'll just do it nice and slowly and nice and gently, okay? Okay, so for those that are, um, <laughs> are with us, who's been following the Clarity Gnome Hunt? Who's managed to work out all the daily clues so far? It's great fun, isn't it? And the added um, twist to this, um, this year's Gnome Hunt is that there's an anagram as well. So, um, yeah. It's amazing how um, Barb comes up with all these little ditties and rhymes. And she was testing me out the other day when we was driving up to TV the other week. And um, she was reading them out for me to guess. I mean, I'm absolute rubbish at things like this. Um, and so, for example, if she read out five of them, I probably got two. <laughs> Um, yeah, absolute rubbish, I really am. Okay, so let's have a look at our progress so far. There we go. Obviously went a little bit heavier on that one. It's a little bit whiter, but doesn't matter, does it? Okay, so let's go back on the back. And we're going to start over here again. Okay, so I'm still using the no, number four tool. And now this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and I'm going to go around and into the middle. So I'm going to go left to right and then round. Left and right and then round. Let's have a look at those, shall we? Those first three. Yeah, there we go. Definitely becoming whiter, isn't it? So yeah, so the gnome hunt is um, great fun. Um, <laughs> and we, just, because I work here, don't think I've got um, any inside knowledge, because I don't. I think the only people that know 
where the pesky little gnomes are hiding are Barb, Stuart, and Jazz. Because Stuart sends out the, the E shots with the clues each day. Um, and Jazz has hidden them um, on the products. So, um, so yeah, it's teamwork. So they're the only three, and the um, the answers are under lock and key. Makes it more fun, doesn't it? So you can't be sort of tapping me up for any more clues because I haven't got the foggiest. Oh dear. So how are we getting on? Who've, how many have got? Oh, the numbers have gone up of people watching. So hopefully you've, you found us over on YouTube. But if you've missed out, if you're coming in after the event, then so you won't miss it because it's always here. Just like me. I'm always here. Here to keep you company. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is so relaxing. So relaxing. Look. And in a way, let me bring it up to the camera. They look a little bit fluffy, like fluffy pom poms. I mean, you can stop at that place if, at this stage if you want to. It's entirely up to you. Um, choices, choices, choices. I mean, you can color these in if you want to. You don't have to do white work. Um, yeah it's all about trying different things and remember what we did last week we practiced because we're going to cut this out now whether you choose to cut it out with a normal pair of scissors or pico cut you've still got all this parchment here that you can practice on so you may want to think okay well maybe i do want to introduce some color so let's draw some circles out take the colour out and then see what colour works for you. Depends on the colour parchment you're using. As I say, I've gone for the teal and the light teal because that's what Linda had done. Um, so we just followed that through. Now on the, um, the darker teal, we traced out the heel, the toe and the top part. And I just kept the top exactly how it came. And we'd started to do some white work in these little dots here, hadn't we? So let's put another layer of white work on these. So for this, I'm going to go down to the number three tool. Okay. So let's do a couple of these and we'll turn it over. And we'll see how white these have gone. Just by putting another layer on. I mean, I can see... There's definitely a difference with those three than the rest of the design. Yeah, look at that. White, white. Because it's a smaller area, it's easier to do. Okay. So. Let's put another layer on here. See, these little areas like this, these are great for... Um, practicing your white work technique. But obviously the smaller the area, the weaker the parchment can become. So you just have to be careful that you don't put too much pressure on. Otherwise you'll have a hole in your stocking. You don't want a hole in your stocking, do you? There we go. Now, yeah, I think that's fine. Now, that sounded, now. Yeah, look at that. So if we compare this to this, 
you can definitely see the difference in the whiteness. And that will be a combination of one, we're on a darker parchment, and two, because it's a smaller area as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and put another layer on this one. So when I was working, I was I had the, the toe this way. So now I'm going to turn the toe that way. Okay. So what have we got coming up this week at Clarity? Um, well, straight after Groovy Tuesday, I'm going to start prepping for the one day special tomorrow evening. Um, I'll be heading up to the studios tomorrow morning. Um, so I've got to prep the demos. And Barb gave you a great sneaky peek, didn't she, of how we do things at the TV um, when it comes to the demos. By having stuff prepped, the, the list of ingredients that we use. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got four hours of TV um, to prep for. So that's fine because it's I'm using some dyes. Um, so that's fine. Um, and then up there Wednesday and Thursday. Um, Barb's in the shack on Thursday as well. So. I think she's got something really nice lined up for Thursday. She was telling me this morning she was driving into the office. Right, I'm going to go to the number three now. I'm just going to put one more layer. Let's do a layer on this one to see what it looks like. Because I may need to go back in with the number four again. So let's have a look. Yeah, that's working. Okay. So let's put one more layer using the number three tool. So up and down, well, no, well, it's left to right, top to bottom, and then I'm going to go round to round. Left to right, bottom to top, and then round to round. And then what we'll do, we'll let this rest while we do some perforating. Okay. So let's repeat the process. See, when I was doing the smaller ones, I could go around in sort of like a... Um, I could go round and round. But on the larger ones, it's a little bit more difficult because it's such a large area. So I can go round and round now. It's all about your. It's weird. Your feel if the parchment is a little bit too weak, um, and if you find that it feels a little bit too weak, then don't push it. Let it rest for for a while, and then come back to it. Okay. Because you don't want to have done all of this and then you get a hole in your pom-pom. Wouldn't be good, would it? Okay. There we go. That's another layer added. I breathe. This is so... I, this just literally is an amazing distraction. Um, I appreciate we've got issues on Facebook and, and stuff like that, but I can't control it. So there's no point getting worked up over it, is there? So and I know it may be frustrating um, for you watching at home and joining in, but it is available on YouTube and it'll be uploaded to Facebook after the hour's finished. So. Right, are we ready to perforate? Who's perforate? Hands up who's going to perforate. I got hands up. I was like, hands up who's going to perforate and hands up who's going to just cut out with a normal pair of scissors. Because what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to perforate and pico cut the stocking, but cut the heel and the toe out with the normal pair of scissors. 
Okay, so I'm going to do a combination of both just to show. So what that means is that we don't need to perforate all the way around the stocking. Okay, so I'm going to get my super foam and we'll swap that out underneath. Okay, pop that to one side. Now when we come to perforate, we're going to perforate from the front of our work. So you can see you've got um, the bright white lines, okay? So I'm gonna cut the darker teal out of a pair of scissors. So I don't need to perforate any further. All I need to do is perforate from there to there, and from there to there, and there to there. Ooh. Let me, I'm not gonna zoom out because I'm gonna focus in on the areas. Okay, so I've got my two needle bold. I may come in on the other camera for this, let's have a look. There we go, so if I come in on this one. Now I'm making the decision at this point that I'm gonna lose this pom-pom. Okay, this pom-pom's gonna be snipped off. I'm gonna put my glasses on. Okay, and I'm actually gonna use the smaller aperture. So if you're new to perforating, what you're gonna do is you're only increasing by one perforation at a time in order to get that perfect pitch, okay? So I'm gonna hold the tool upright and I'm perforating on the outside of the line. So tool upright. Now, whether you go all the way in or whether you just go half the, the depth of the needle, it's entirely up to you, okay? So, and then you take the needle and you go back in to the last hole you come out of, it says. Let me just get it right, there we go. I'm gonna do it this way so I can see better, there we go. Now what you can do, I mean, it, when you're using a single or a two needle tool, it's not really required. Um, but if you're using sort of like um, multi-needle tools, like the Pico Vs, for example, um, then what I would suggest is you put your tumble dry sheet on top of your perforating mat. Okay, so uh, where's my tumble dry sheet? Here's one always got tumble dry sheets. So what you would do is you put your tumble dry sheet down. This is a well used tumble dry sheet. Then your parchment and then your groovy guard. And what that does is it just allows, actually it, even with the two needle tool, it does make a difference. Because what it's doing, every time it passes through the parchment and the tumble dry sheet, it's lubricating the needles, okay? And actually I can feel the parchment's not pulling so much, okay? So, there we go, just gonna work our way along. Can you see that all right? Oh no, it's like on the, the overhead, whether that's better. Should we try that? Answers from the audience, please. Overhead camera or the side camera? What do you prefer? I can say answers on a postcard, but by the time the postcard gets there, I would have finished. It doesn't make any difference to me. Overhead, okie dokie. Right, so I've done this area here, and now what we're gonna do is this area here. So I'll just relocate. Okay, so if we're gonna stick with the overhead, what I might do is zoom in a little bit more. Okay. So everyone prefers the overhead, super. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit. Eee, whoops, a little bit too fast. 
Okay, okay. Right. So we're going to continue with it now and do a little bit more. See, even if you're new to PK cutting, just doing these small areas, um, again, is a, a good way of practicing. Okay, so I'm holding the tool upright and I'm just perforating on the outside of that white line. Okay. See, so we just go along. And it's only small areas that we're concentrating on. So it's perfect for this. I mean, you may get carried away and you go, and if you go further, it doesn't matter, does it? Um, choices. I, I know you always say this with Groovy, but it is, you do have so many different choices. Um, here we go. A little bit close to the line there. But, hey ho. And then if I turn this round, we're now going to do this area here. So groovy guard again. And perforate. And what happens is that it's weird. It's like when you're pico cutting, you know how far to move your hand in order for the needles to reinsert. You can use the two needle fine if you have that. Um, but for me, um, if you're starting out, then the two needle bold is better because it gives you a bigger hole for the tips of your scissors. So when we was driving up to um, TV on Sunday, um for the three to five show we i mean we talk about so much in the car um what we're going to do next year and um what's coming up and and everything else and um to so talk about what we're going to do in groovy tuesday next year because obviously we can't carry the stockings over into next year really can we um i mean i know i can waffle but i don't really want to be waffling I'd like to get the stocking done in time for Christmas. So I thought what we'd do, we'd have a look. Um, here we go. Let's, let me zoom out now. Okay. And zoom out. Needs to go that way. There we go. So what we've done with perforate, because these little pom-poms are going to disappear, okay, on both sides. So we've just perforated down to the top of the heel. We've perforated the sole underneath, from the edge of the heel to the toe. And then we've perforated there, okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this area and this area and this area here out with a normal pair of scissors, okay. But I was saying, what we're thinking of doing next, well, not thinking, what I'd like to do in January, because I think many people that have joined us throughout the year via Crate and Craft or just finding us on our Facebook and our YouTube page, is some grid work, okay. Now, don't go, oh no, I can't do grid work, I can't do grid work, you can you really, 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 really can. Because what we're going to do, we're going to take Josie's diagonal ribbon lace plates. All the work has been done for us, okay? And we launched these earlier in the year, and there's four different ones in the collection. So we're going for the diagonal, and the diagonal has this horseshoe, okay? So it's perfect. You haven't got to think about lining up all four corners. 
So you've got hope you feel better soon. You've got season's greetings. You've got sending love your way. And you've got thinking of you. And I thought we could take one of these. It doesn't matter which one you have. The principle will be exactly the same. The only difference will be where the pico cutting's done. So I reckon, see, they're all so nice. I don't know which one to go for. So even though this one says season greetings, I love the, the ziggy zaggy element to it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to go for sending love your way. Okay, so when we come back in chat, I mean, we're not going anywhere yet. We've still got some weeks to go yet before Christmas, haven't we? I mean, Christmas is a long way away. Not. <laughs> um, I think we'll go with sending love your way. Okay, and we're going to take the plate exactly how it comes. Okay, so super duper simple, easy. And we're going to create a beautiful frame with the expert, Josie. Josie's done it all for us. Um, and we're going to have a look at maybe we just want to do the embossing without the perforating and pico cutting. Um, maybe we want to emboss and perforate, but no pico cutting. Um, so what we'll do over the course of a, a few weeks, or even a, at least a month anyway, is that we'll do the play exactly how it comes, and then I'll show you how you can shorten it and extend it as well. So it gives you more choices. But I thought this would be a great way to start the new year. Um, yeah, so that's what, when we was driving up in the car on Sunday, that's what we thought, would be a good place to go for the new year. Okay. So, hope I haven't scared you off for January. <laughs> but January is a long way away yet. So, um, so yeah. It'll be fine. It really will because it is so. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Seriously, I'm not just saying. Yes, I've been doing groovy for a long time. Yes, I've been doing grid work, but I do it with the right tools and equipment. And the groovy plate gives me, makes it, it really does. There's no counting. I can't perforate where I shouldn't perforate. Can't emboss where I shouldn't emboss. So, um, so yeah, so that's what we're gonna go for. We're gonna go for, which one did I say? Sending love your way. I better write that down because um, sending, because I'll forget. I know I can go back and watch to see what I said. Love your way, Jan 23. There we go. Right, okay. Oh, look at that time. Oh, where does it go? <laughs> I'm sure you'll get it right, Karin. You really will. Um, yeah. Once the head starts working, sort of, it'll just happen. It really works. It's the same with pico cutting. I couldn't do it, and then all of a sudden it just went click, and that's it. Okay, so going on to pico cutting glasses. Hang on, let's put the cap on that. That wouldn't be good, would it? Okay, so let's come back in on here. So we're going to pico cut around these areas here. Okay, now we've got three different scissors of choice. We've got the ring lock. We have the exclusive. And we've got the perk cutters. So the exclusive, uh, a good pair of scissors to start out with if you are if you want to give Pico cutting a go. Um, it's what Barb uses, what Linda uses. 
I tend to, myself and Tina tend to go with the ring locks or the perker cutters. And I think um, Josie is the same. I think she's ring lock and perker cutters, but I'm sure she'll correct me. I can never remember what the different um, design team members use. But I'm going to go with the, the ring lock. Okay. Now I wonder whether it might be better on this camera. So what we're going to do, we're going to hold the scissors over the waist area, the piece that's going to fall off. Okay. And I'm going to hold the scissors. Hang on. Let's do it on the overhead for this one. In this, what we call the spoon position where it curves upwards rather than the fork position where it curves down. There we go. So Jane's a ring lock and Josie's a perker cutter. There you go. I knew I'd get it wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to come in from underneath with my scissors. Let's come over there. And it's the tips of the scissors that go in. These glasses, I need to change these glasses. And then we're just going to squeeze and snip. And I'm just going to tilt slightly towards me. And it's that satisfying snip sound that does it. Now I'm going to turn my work so it's more comfortable for me. And because I'm using the 12 by 12 super foam, I'm working on a completely flat surface. Okay. So let me just, I'm going to move it over a little bit. There we go. So my wrist is completely resting on the 12 by 12 super foam. So I'm not a, a different level to the work. It's just what works for me. Um, but to have that larger area really does, for me, make a difference. And it's only the tips of the scissors that are going in. If you go in too far, what happens is it's the blade of the scissors that will then cut the parchment and you won't end up with a pico. You'll just end up with a straight line. I reckon I'll get this snipped. Okay, so let's have a vote. So we're on the side or should I come in more? I might be better on the overhead, though. On the overhead? On the overhead, actually. Let me come in. Oops, sorry. How close do I want to come? How good is my pico cutting? Or is it a little bit rusty? <laughs> I don't mind sharing. Okay, where did I get to? I've done that one. Done that one. There we go. So it's just a little snip, snip. Snip. Some people prefer to come towards them. Some people prefer to work, go from top, from bottom to top. I'm sure there's a, a technical way of whether you go top to bottom or bottom to top. All right, should we see how good or not so good this is? So I'm going to snip. That way there, that way there. I'm happy with that. Let's have a look. There we go. Yeah, a little bit dodged to start with. That's because I didn't warm up, you see. So. Okay, so let's do the bottom now, the sole. I reckon we could definitely have this cut out by the end of this hour. And the thing, you know what I was talking about? Um, when you perforate, you know how far to move your hand in order to reinsert the needle to move along the edge. It's the same 
with the scissors, you know how much to open them in order to, to get them in the right place for the holes. Okay, I'm going to just turn it around so it's more comfortable. And at the end of the day, it's the overall effect that we're looking for. We're not going to go in and examine every single Pico and say, this one's slightly wonky, this one's not. Why? Why would you? I don't know. It's the overall effect that we're going for. Okay. And just snip, snip, snip. I'm just gonna see even that snipping sound is so soothing. It's been a very relaxed session today. Well I think it has anyway. Um see even my voice slows down. That's slow, I could fall asleep. No. <laughs> I must admit, um I have fallen asleep whilst Pico cutting. It really relaxed me. Um, I was doing it, I was Pico cutting whilst listening to the TV. And uh, I had my feet up on the puffy, um, light panel on underneath, because I was using the, the white super foam. And, um, and that's when I, I sort of woke up and Luckily, my hand hadn't moved, <laughs> and um, I hadn't ruined what I'd done. Um, but I was a bit disappointed that the the Pico fairies hadn't jumped in and carried on for me. I mean, I'd only dozed off for about five minutes or so. It wasn't, I wasn't like out for the count, but I was out for the count. But um, yeah. <laughs> Very relaxing. Right, let me reach up and zoom out on this camera so we can have, oh, wrong way. There we go. Right, so now I need a pair of scissors. Just a little pair to do the job. Let me have a look. I think somebody borrowed my little scissors. But this will be fine. I think like a good pair of dressmaking scissors to cut out. Okay, I'm going to put the glasses on though. Right, so now what we're going to do is just cut around the outside. And what I'm doing, when I cut, the scissors are in one place and I'm actually turning the parchment into the scissors. Okay. We're going to go around like so. I mean, back in the day, back in the day, back in the day, um, I would have used a craft knife to cut this part out. But scissors are a lot more easier to use. Actually, these bigger scissors really make a difference because you can get more of a cut from it. So then we're going to come around this part. Okay. And you're just going to turn the toe into the scissors. There we go. Just woo. take it slowly. There's no rush. Okay, and don't forget, on the toe and the heel, we're going to put another piece of parchment on top anyway. So, so if it's not perfect, perfect. Okay, oh, I missed one there. Hang on. Oh. 
Where is it? Is it that one? That one. There we go. Oh, I didn't want to pull that, did I? And then just around the hill. So this is what I love about these designs from Linda is that you can pico cut. Obviously, of course you can. Um, but because the shapes are simplistic in shape, that doesn't sound right. Um, you can use an all pair of scissors to cut out as well. Okay, there we go. We now have our completed stocking. Let me bring that up so you can see. So oh, I'm going to take these glasses off. So we've got the pico cutting across there, down the side and down the front. And then the rest we've cut out with a normal pair of scissors. So choices. You may decide you want to pick up all of it. You may want to use scissors around all of it. Or you may want to do a combination just like I have. Because what we're going to do next week is we're going to cut these out and stick them on top. Okay, just like so. So, it's 11 o'clock. Wow, where has that, yeah, 11 o'clock. I had to look at the clock then. Thinking, is it 10 o'clock or is it 11 o'clock? It is 11 o'clock. Um, so thank you once again for joining me. Apologies for any technical issues that were out of our control. Um, I hope you can join me tomorrow at six o'clock on Create and Craft for the launch of a brand new one day special, six o'clock and nine o'clock. And then on Thursday, you've got a choice of the shack with Barb at 10 or myself. And then my final hour for the year on Create and Craft is at two o'clock on Thursday. So take care, stay safe, stay warm. Um, and I will see you all on, well, I'll see some of you tomorrow night. Otherwise, I will see you all next Tuesday. Take care now. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks, Jim. And um, I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.